Have you ever wondered what they were doing with those cameras? If this were Nazi Germany in the 1930s, would you want Adolf Hitler to have these pictures of you? These people are expressing dissent against the U.S. government, dissent against government policies. Look at these faces. How many of these are people you know? Are they your children? Your parents? Your grandparents? Some of these faces belong to people that I care about. One of them is even me. I don't want the government having this kind of information about me. I don't want them collecting this kind of information about me or the people that I care about. But they are collecting this information. Why? Public information officers have a standard line for video like this. They like to say that the video camera just captures one perspective, one angle, that it doesn't really show what happened or what precipitated what happened. But this is their footage. This is their side of the story. And their side of the story is more damning even than ours. Shame on you! Their behavior is very suspect. Look at the way they zero in on people's faces at political demonstrations. Why? What are they going to do with this information? They see this guy and they assume that he's a leader because he has a megaphone. They walk all the way down here and turn the camera to get a better angle on his face. It's very dangerous to have them assume that you're a leader. Because even when they're wrong, the consequences can be disastrous. Look at the lengths they go to to identify this person. Look at the details they try to pick up. Here's something to think about. If you ever feel like you're being targeted by police in the middle of a political demonstration, it might be wise to disguise yourself, maybe change your clothes. But don't forget your shoes. Some people see the writing on the wall. They have a sense of history and they understand what's probably coming. And so they've taken steps to protect their identities. But when you try to protect your privacy, it just makes the police state that much more curious. If you listen carefully, you can actually hear them talking about who they want pictures of and why. Get the people with the masks.
You got a peeping around right no, there? Right the guy behind him. Okay, the guy yeah, behind him, what do you do? He has a lantern and he also has a tool on it. Okay. Last and tool with the last one down here picking up on the door. But he's right in that corner, he's the one to the scene. Okay. So I'll catch him in a second. I'll go over. But if we show it to his PO, he goes to tell me to be a corner for the right. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you know him? Yeah, Elias knows him very well. Elias knows him very well. What are they going to use this information for? We have a right to be nervous about this kind of abuse of power. We already know the police state is brutal. In our city, we remember that the police pepper sprayed babies. Babies. <laughs> Every time I see that, I wonder why we didn't fight back, why we didn't defend ourselves, why we didn't have baseball bats in our hands. It's scary to me that they would do that to us, and it's scarier still that we would take it. And it terrifies me that someday we might not fight back when they're dragging us away to the camps. Earlier in the evening, police used pepper spray, pepper pellets, and apparently rubber stinger pellets in a series of confrontations with protesters. Along with reports of a three-year-old being hit with pepper spray. The corporate media told us that this melee happened because someone threw a bottle. Something was thrown from the crowd and police began pepper spraying people everywhere. Police used pepper spray to break up an unruly crowd. They respond with pepper spray when someone throws a bottle. Something was thrown from the crowd and someone throws a bottle. They repeated that mantra for days after this police riot. Someone threw a bottle. Everything was fine, everything was peaceful, but then someone threw a bottle. And that's what started this. In point of fact, that was a lie. What really happened is that the people inside the Hilton, the people with all that money, they could hear the protesters outside, and they didn't want to. People inside had paid thousands upon thousands of dollars to grab the president's ear. But the people outside on the street hadn't paid anything, and so they were silenced. Here are the police officers in their own words from two different cameras discussing what's really happening here. Did you hear what he just said? Now look at the crowd in the background. Do you see any bottles being thrown? Do you see anyone doing anything except exercising their First Amendment rights under the U.S. Constitution? Now listen again. Even as best we can. We're from that side, and we're going to run along the front line to meet OSP. We're going to jump on the other side of the fence right in front of it. Second part of it. They're going to give the command to leave, and after we leave, we're going to push. Push, 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 
Sticks next. They're going to do some individual OC spray. And if they have to, they're going to go to Stinger. I mean, to uh, Pepperball Guns. Pepperball Guns are the last that they don't move, all right? They're going to go to OC, Sticks if you need to, and then Pepperball. Got it? It should be noted that what the cops are so nonchalantly discussing right here is, in fact, torture. They're talking about dousing the crowd with chemical weapons that have the potential to actually kill people. They're talking about hitting people with sticks and shooting them with painful projectiles. And in their own words, the reason why they're doing this is not that someone threw a bottle, but just that they're there. Because they won't move. And why should they? After all, no one is breaking any laws here. All they're doing is exercising their First Amendment rights under the U.S. Constitution to speak out. We're not doing anything wrong! And the cops know that. By their own words, they know that they're going to pepper spray them, that they're going to hit them with sticks, and that they're probably going to shoot at them with projectile weapons. Not because they've broken any laws, but just because they're there. That's the reason. That's the only reason why police attacked a peaceful crowd on August 22, 2002, in Portland, Oregon. We've been saying this for three years, and now we have their footage to prove it. We're going to spray and push, spray and push. You get it to the other side. There was no bottle throwing. Nothing precipitated this. This was a cold, calculated decision that they made, and this is from the perspective of their own cameras. An answer to reports that children were also struck in the pushback. A police spokesperson says children should have been kept away from a demonstration of this size. Now to concentrate on bombing the people themselves into submission and make them cry for mercy. Guess what? This is fascism. Think about it! We're not doing anything wrong! Hey! Stop! Stop it, Officer Gorgut! Stop it! Quit pushing me! I'm with you! I'm being impressed! I'm watching you guys! Better watch it!